Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new video for you and I'll be talking about something that's actually pretty important to me and I really wanna share this with you guys because I wish I had this video a couple years ago. So in today's video, we're talking 10 signs to know whether you're in a toxic relationship or not. First of all, let's give a little bonus sign. If you're watching this video, you're probably in a toxic relationship. The reason why you need to watch this video is because you've lost yourself and you don't trust yourself enough to know or decide whether or not the relationship you're in is toxic. When you lose trust in yourself and when you lose yourself, you lose sight of reality. And that's why you're in this video to pretty much validate your feelings so that you can make a decision, which is good. It's a good thing that you're aware enough to watch this video. But I will say, if you're on this video, there's a high chance that you're in a toxic relationship. When I was in a toxic relationship, I was trying to find videos like this. I was also watching like signs you should break up or signs that you might not be with the right person and things like that. Like I was watching videos like that and reading Reddit forums like that. And that in itself should have been enough to be like, maybe this isn't the healthiest for you. Okay, 10 signs. I'm gonna read them off pretty quickly and then I'm gonna go in depth on each one just so you guys can kind of know what's coming as you're watching the video. All right, these are the 10 signs and I came up with these, I just have it on my notes app. So you ignore all the red flags in the beginning. You don't tell your friends about your fights. You have the same fights over and over again. You feel sick and nervous every time you have to have a talk. You avoid telling them how you feel to avoid arguments. You don't see your friends as often. You prioritize them over many other things that you have going on in your life in fear of losing them. You know in your gut you shouldn't be together, but you're too comfortable on and off relationship. And they bring more stress than peace. That is number 10. So let's start with number one. These are in no particular order. I'm just listing off different things that I realized I ignored in my relationship. So number one is you ignore the red flags in the beginning. Usually in a toxic relationship, I mean, they go different ways, but you know, sometimes somebody could really have you fooled and they seem perfect. Other times you see the red flags and you hope and pray that they can change or this dynamic could change or you can change, you know, like there's red flags. You're like, hmm, like they don't want more than one kid. It's okay, we'll work on that. Or hmm, they get a little angrier than I'd like when we have an argument. It's okay, we'll work on that. It's still early, you know what I mean? Like those are things that you can't ignore in the beginning because later on down the line, you will look back and realize that all the red flags you ignored in the beginning are the reason that you're arguing, that you're fighting, that you have issues. So if you know in your gut that there were red flags in the beginning that are starting to like seep into your life now, pay attention to those things because they like they only get worse as time goes on, which I hate to say, but it's the truth. Like it just gets worse. So pay attention to the red flags because those are indicators on where your relationship could go really, really wrong in the future. Number two, you don't tell your friends about your fights. I don't think you need to go around airing out your business to your friends. I don't. Sometimes you just gotta deal with it with your significant other because your friends look at things differently and you guys have different opinions. So I'm not saying tell everything to your friends, but there are certain things that you keep from your friends for a reason. For example, the toxic relationship I was in, my ex used to call me a lot of terrible things and say really, really hurtful things to me and I convinced myself that I just like didn't want to repeat it because it was just like it was triggering to me but it's something that I probably should have told my friends because I was so lost that I like forgot that like hey this isn't okay I don't know why it's so sad to look back and like know that I allowed this behavior but I'm saying this to say like I didn't tell my friends and I wish I did because they're just like looking back now and now they're like why didn't you tell me that and I'm like I guess like part of me was embarrassed, part of me like, I think I didn't want to accept that like he said those things to me. Part of me believed them, so I didn't want to like bring attention to it because it was embarrassing for me because like I felt like I was these things because I had been told that I was for so long. So I didn't tell my friends. And if you find that there's a lot of things that you're avoiding bringing up in your friendships, I think that's like a really, really big thing. And I think that you should start to tell your friends when things like that happen so that they can remind you of these things when things go bad and you can really think about the relationship and if you're meant to be in it or not because sometimes you need someone to tell you these things and remind you like hey this is a pattern for him he said this last time you know like sometimes you need to hear from your friends so it's definitely a sign of being in a toxic relationship if you find that like you're keeping shit to yourself more than you normally would number three you have the same fights over and over again so usually in relationships you have a fight you talk it out you move on 
and then a few weeks, few months, whatever, you have another fight. You talk it out, you move on. Maybe you have the same fight twice because, you know, people take a little bit of time to evolve. But usually you just kind of like, you move on from that argument and the next time you fight, it's some new shit. In toxic relationships, you fight over the same things over and over and over again. It's exhausting and that is not normal. You shouldn't be fighting about the same things over and over again because somebody should make the effort to change, you know? Or maybe if the person doesn't need to change, maybe the other person needs to change their perspective and fucking loosen up and and relax a little bit you know what i mean like it's it, it depends on the relationship i don't know all i know is that you should not be having the same fight over and over again someone needs to evolve the relationship needs to evolve how can you grow if you're going back to the same place over and over again you're stuck that's not normal that is toxic so you being in a relationship should mean to you that it is benefiting and valuing your life not adding chaos and repetitive bad cycles that's not okay if you find that you're fighting over the same thing for the, the seventh time i think you should reevaluate your relationship and ask yourself is there any growth happening here or are we stuck number four you feel sick nervous anxious every single time you have to have a talk so i don't know how your relationships are but i know like from my experience there were times where we would fight and we'd need time to think and then we'd like come together a week later or three days later to like have a conversation the hours, or not even the hours, the days leading up to that conversation, I would feel sick to my stomach, like, so anxious. I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, it was like an unexplainable amount of anxiety that I would get. I had to take fucking CBD oil or eat CBD gummies before having these talks. That is not normal. And he didn't even know that. That's something that I did because I was like, my anxiety doesn't make any sense, so I should probably just, like, have a gummy or something, you know? And one time I took freaking lorazepam before a talk because I was so anxious. Not normal, pretty fucking toxic if you ask me. You guys are not fighting each other. You two are coming together and battling against the problem that you have at hand. You're a team. You're not on opposing sides. You shouldn't be nervous. It's not like you need to win. It's not a battle. You know what I mean? It's like you're coming together to have a conversation to make your relationship better and to move past whatever happened not coming together to just like battle it out not that i ever felt that way but it was hard because i just feel like i knew how the conversation was going to go and i knew i couldn't change it no matter what i said so i would get so anxious and that wasn't okay that wasn't normal for me so if you find that that's how you feel give some things a second thought because it's it's a lot on your mental health number five you find that you avoid telling them how you feel a lot because you want to avoid arguments like I said, I used to feel like I knew how the conversation was going to go, so I wouldn't bring things up. And that's not okay if you feel that way, if you feel like you don't want to tell them when you're upset or when you feel triggered by something, or you know, you don't want to tell them how you're feeling all the time because you just know it's not worth it because it's going to escalate and turn into a fight or it's going to be your fault, something, 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 you know. I don't think that's okay. I don't think that you should be feeling that way. I don't think that's healthy because then you start to suppress everything and then they also are not given the chance to know what they're doing wrong. I'm, I know in most cases if you're doing that it's because they don't take criticism well and you can't control that. It's it's not fair to either of you, you know, and that's why you just shouldn't be together if that's something that you're feeling because you should be able to talk to your partner. You should be able to tell them how you feel. They should be able to take in what you say and react positively to it because I used to be a really defensive person so when people would come to me and tell me problems I would get defensive which made people not want to tell me things that's not okay so it, I don't know whose fault it is in your situation it doesn't matter but you need to do the work to be better at communicating with them and they need to do the work to be better at you know receiving information and more receptive to criticism so if neither of you can do that then it's probably toxic and you probably shouldn't be together so that's just my opinion Number six, you don't see your friends as often. I mean, this is pretty common sense. Sometimes when you get into a toxic relationship, you don't see your friends as often. Maybe it's because they make you feel bad about it. Maybe, you know, they get jealous. Maybe you just want to spend so much time with them because you're codependent and you have like an anxious attachment style that you don't want to leave their side. So you neglect your friendships and your other relationships. Who knows? Maybe they're manipulating you into thinking that your friends are toxic or you know, I don't know what it is, but if you find that suddenly you haven't seen your friends in months that you used to see twice a week, I think you should definitely reconsider the dynamic of your relationship and 
just figure it out like is that healthy for you is that a good thing is that a bad thing are your friends toxic if they're toxic maybe it's a good thing i don't know only you know but it's definitely something that you need to like sit and reflect on my noodles are overcooking <laughs> number seven you prioritize them over many things in your life to avoid losing them so something that i did in my relationship that is not my ex's fault it is my fault was that i would put them before a lot of things in my life uh this person gave me like a day or two a week to see them and most times we were doing things it would be like to do with his work um so that sucks so if he let me know like hey i'm gonna be doing this today like for work do you want to tag along i would drop everything and go because it meant that i got to spend more time with him and that was stupid of me <laughs> he didn't ask me to do that he was very open like if you don't want to come you don't have to come you know like i'm just letting you know in case you want to like he was very open but for me like i was i don't know maybe i was insecure like i felt like i don't know i just like wanted to be there for some reason i don't know why i did it it was very dumb i would be like working on my youtube videos and he'd call me and i'd be like okay what time do you need me to be ready he'd tell me and i'd be like okay and then i would be like oh, i'll just like edit when i come home so then i'd leave the house go do what we need to do come home and it'd be late so i wouldn't edit or i'd just like end up sleeping at his house you know like I would put him over a lot of my work or like even like if I had to see a new friend that I wasn't really close with and like he called me and asked me to come through like I'd be like ah eh, whatever like I'll just come with you and I'll go with him you know and that, that I didn't like that I don't know why I did that um, it's okay I've learned from it but I will never do that again so if you find that you're kind of like dropping everything at their beck and call or like you're putting them before important things in your life or your grades have dropped since you started seeing them or suddenly like the only days you had off you have to go do things with them and you have no time to yourself like start to give yourself that time like learn how to you know properly manage your time so that you can have a balance between everything and not just like 80 percent of your time is his and 20 percent is work like that that's not normal number eight you know in your gut you shouldn't be with them but you're too comfortable I mean, it is what it is, like it's very common sense. You feel it in your gut. I know that feeling when you lie to yourself and you're like, it's okay, it's okay. But in your gut, you just know, like, I shouldn't be with this person. I really shouldn't be with this person. And you ignore it, and you ignore it, and you ignore it. Deep down, you know what you need to do, but you don't want to be alone. You don't want to lose them. It's not even that you don't want to be alone. It's like you don't want to lose them. You don't want to go through the healing process. You don't want to lose your best friend. You don't want to lose your lover you don't want to like have to rewrite your whole life oh i wanted kids in a couple of years and now i'm gonna be single and i may as well just stay with this person you know like no no god willing you know you have a full life to live on this earth and you get to just you know move on and take your time to find a better partner for you because being with someone because you're comfortable is not okay you can't just like wait for something to happen if you know it's not for you you need to pull the plug you need to pull the plug and you will get over it because this is the way that i look at it being in a toxic relationship really fucking hurts it's not fun it's painful when you get into arguments when you go through things it, it hurts and it's like this like feeling that you have in your stomach that you wake up with and you just know it's not right and like you're doing a disservice to yourself and so you start to not love yourself you know it hurts you know what else hurts heartbreak heartbreak hurts breaking up with the person hurts really bad it hurts worse than being in the relationship but this is the way that i look at it when you're in the relationship you're hurting just to hurt you're just going through life with them just in pain when you're going through heartbreak because you broke up with them you're hurting but you're hurting to heal so yeah it's more painful yeah it sucks but you're you're only going up from there you are hurting to heal you're not just like on this constant state of pain you are hurting, 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 and then you go good, go up, and you're healed, you know? So at least you're going somewhere. That's why I think, like, pulling the plug is necessary. Because, yeah, it's gonna suck. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not fun. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Number nine. Your relationship is on and off. Not normal. Nope. You should not be breaking up every time you have an argument. You should not have anxiety in your stomach every time you fight because you think you're gonna break up. You should not be telling people oh well technically we've been together for five years but really it's only been three years because out of like the couple years you know on and off and on and off like we probably spent about three years together like mm -mm 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 -mm. 
not normal. You should not be in a relationship in which you are breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and getting back together and breaking up. It's tempting. I know. I have been there. Never thought I would be that person, but I was. And um, it's very toxic, it's very traumatizing, and it's not normal. And if you are meant to be together, you will not break up every two seconds. Usually if you break up, there's a reason for it. Just leave it, leave it at that, because I'm telling you, like, I know it's like this toxic, like, addictive chase when you guys break up and get back together. It's, it's just like, that's all it is. It's an addictive chase and it's toxic and it's not something you need to be putting yourself into. So get out of that relationship. If that's the relationship you're in, I'm telling you, it's not gonna end well. You're gonna go through that cycle for a long time and then in the end, you're just gonna break up. What is the point of that? What is the point of that? And lastly, number 10 is that they bring you more stress than peace. Your partner should be your peace. They should be your safe haven. They should be the person that you go to when you want to feel at peace not the person that's bringing stress into your life yeah couples are going to argue you're going to have a fight every now and then they're going to stress you out sometimes of course but they should not be bringing more stress into your life than peace because that means they're taking away from your life why would you want a person in your life that is taking from you why would you want that they, they should be valuing you they should be valuing your life making your life better making your life easier more peaceful making you feel loved not insecure not stressed not anxious not any of those things they should be bringing you peace and if they're not get rid of them get rid of them okay that was 10 signs that you are in a toxic relationship i hope that you learned something from this i hope that if you are in a relationship that i just explained that this helped you open your eyes to some things and that you know moving forward you will do what you got to do to make sure that you are living your life for your highest good. I'm sorry if you're going through this. It's not fun. It sucks. It's painful. It's traumatizing. And I hope that we all heal through it because we deserve that. I know I have. So if I can heal, you can heal. But yeah, do what you got to do. Break up with him or her or them. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do I? Did you enjoy it? I don't know if you can really enjoy the video, but I hope you learned something from this video. Um, if you have any tips or any signs, any additional like signs you're in a toxic relationship that you want to share, feel free to drop in the comments. With that being said, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and uh, I guess that's it. Bye, guys. <laughs>